el de Australia y Nueva Zelanda. Llegan a Torga, el de Australia y Nueva Zelanda. Van a Santiago, por el camino de Santiago. I wish this was smell-o-vision because this is a glorious tree, the linden tree. We first fell in love with it in Slovenia in 2006, so it was a real sentimental highlight to see one here. Casual mid-morning wine tasting could make for an entertaining day. This is the hand washing that we do every day on the Camino. It's an act of mindfulness. Just ahead there's a choice to be made. Continue on this road or take the steep upward climb to a detour. Guess which one we did. And boy was it worth it. If I could change one thing about our Camino, I would stay a night with Anna and Miguel here in Prevella. We had the most amazing lunch and chestnut brandy, homemade. And on the way down the hill, we found, for the second time only, wild strawberries. Oh my God! Nectar. <laughs>
We've come to love the mountains and to enjoy climbing them, even when it's a bit soggy. And the reward is always immense. Now, this is glorious Galicia, uh, the northwest corner of Spain. It has Celtic heritage and, and Celtic climate, and it's so green and lush and beautiful. Check out the view. The 25 kilometers we walked today was all downhill. I think we descended about 680 meters in total. And this is where Kath took control of the camera while I was dealing with the pain in my shin splints. These are rural farming towns where cows get herded through the streets and we see people's crops growing. There's some poo, an empty vending machine, and a kiwi fruit vine. Sometimes feels strange that we're walking so close to people's lives 
through their backyards, their front yards, in between their farm buildings. But it's never boring, that's for sure. It seems like the lack of public toilets is not just a problem for the pilgrims. All across Spain I was tormented with the promise of blackberries, but we were just a couple of weeks too early. We stopped at the place owned by Isabel and Enrique, who used to live in Melbourne. Isabel would not stop feeding us, and the whole thing was by donation, I think. We were also happy to spend some time with Keiko again. And sometimes you need a bit more time to dry your laundry. This is the town closest to the last 100 kilometres of the Camino. So it's the starting point for a lot of people who are walking for traditional or religious purposes and the requirement is to walk 100 kilometres to receive a Compostela or certificate at the end. This structure is an orio, a traditional Galician grain store. Communal pilgrim meals are fun. Who's at the dinner table? German, French, Danish, Italian, Romanian, Hungarian, Slovenian, Persian, Dutch and Antipodean.
It's unbelievable to us that this archaeological site is right next to the track and yet so few pilgrims take the time to look at it and we have the place to ourselves. This is a, a Castro. It was inhabited from the 4th century BC to the 1st century AD. We see sewerage systems, fire hearths and incredibly straight walls. It's really awe-inspiring. And in the space of one day, I am both majestic explorer and complete idiot in an Ikea poncho. And suddenly we find ourselves somewhere that smells so familiar. We're in eucalyptus forests. I absolutely loved this lunch. Local cheese and one of the best tortillas we had. We really appreciate everyone's gardens, the productive ones and the ornamental. We're so close to Santiago now, and I think most people are walking in today, but we've decided to stop just short of the city so we can make our grand entrance early in the morning. We're walking through a lot of gum trees again um, and just enjoying the moment. Look, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but to be honest, the albergue was the worst we stayed in on the whole Camino. And we thought we would be able to get some great shots of the sunset, but the curfew at the albergue meant we had to rush back after we took these photos. But tomorrow, Santiago, here we come. <laughs> 